What's up, bro? Welcome back to the classroom. This is Professor Denmo. I'm actually testing out a new microphone this video, so let me know if the audio is okay in the comments section down below. But I have a question for you. If you knew what you knew now just a couple of years ago, how much would it have changed your life? Like imagine if all of the things that you've learned over the last couple of months, even the last couple of weeks, what if you knew that when you were in high school? What if you knew that when you were like 21 years old? I'm telling you right now, bro, that this might be the most valuable video that you ever watch if you're under the age of 25. Now, I say this because you can still change your life after 25, but it gets a lot harder because after the age of 25, all of these things have probably already happened. So I want you to comment your age down below. Let us know how old you are because I know there's a lot of others that are probably feeling like they're alone right now. They feel like nobody else is going through what they're going through. But I guarantee if you scroll down to the comment section, there is somebody your age. And if there isn't, comment your age down below, okay? So the reason this is so important is because essentially what happens to men in their mid twenties is they go through this process and it messes up the rest of their life. And then they find themselves at about the age of 30, maybe even 40, where they have so many regrets about poor decisions they make. The reason I was inspired to teach you guys this lesson today is because I've been doing these whiteboard videos lately and I've been getting comments, man, I wish I knew this in my early 20s. Now, a lot of the people that watch my videos are men that are teenagers or they're in their early 20s. So if you're under the age of 25, this is perfect. I guarantee this is gonna be one of the most valuable videos that you ever watch, okay? And if you are older, all these things still apply to you and you'll actually be able to watch this and be like, damn, you're right. That's where I made a mistake. That's where things went wrong. And don't worry, if you watch until the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you how to overcome all of this. Even if you have messed up this bad, even if you've gone through this process, you can still turn it around, bro, regardless of how old you are, okay? So that's for you guys that are in your 30s or 40s and you feel like all hope is lost. Don't worry, bro, I'm gonna take care of you too, okay? So let's get started, guys. The very first thing that every man goes through is school. I want you to realize something right now. You have been in school for at least 20 years of your life. So if you're 20 years old, 100% of your life has been in school. Maybe you're a couple years older, maybe you're in your 30s, that still means that like the majority of your life, at least 60, 70% of it was spent in a classroom. And there's a lot of good things about that, but there's a lot of bad things, especially if you're a man. Essentially, the behavior we have here shapes the rest of our lives. So if you were in the unfortunate situation where you had bad teachers, you got bullied in school, you got left out from others, this actually morphed you into the person you are today. Now, don't worry, bro. You can still change who you are, but the problem is in school, a lot of us get brainwashed. The teachers tell us to do this. We kind of get this idea of how we're supposed to behave around women. We get this idea of how we're supposed to do everything that the teachers tell us to. Don't question authority. Believe everything you read on the news. A lot of it's brainwashing, man. And it hurts our confidence because as a man, we don't learn best by sitting in a classroom, reading books or like doing stuff like that. We need to run around. We have excess energy. That's why so many young men are diagnosed with ADHD. It's because teachers just don't know what to do with us. So the number one thing that happens to a lot of young men is they get programmed and unfortunately turn in to an NPC. Okay. Now, fortunately, because of the internet and videos like this, you can break out of being an NPC by going on YouTube and learning content. Some of the stuff that I put on my channel, but for most people, just think about like the people, you know, they're stuck here. Okay. Now the next mistake that most men make is they get bad advice. Okay. I want you to think back to high school when you had a meeting with a teacher or a guidance counselor. Usually what they would do is ask you a couple of questions like, do you like animals? Yeah, I do. Okay. You should be a veterinarian or whatever it is, right? They tell you pretty bad advice. You got to think who's the person actually giving you advice. Okay. Teachers and guidance counselors. Teachers have never been in the real world for the most part, especially middle school and high school teachers. They essentially go to school and then they go to more school, college or university. They get a degree, then they get a bachelor's degree, and then they go to teacher's college for two years. By the age of 24, 25, they're back in the classroom teaching you in school. Imagine a 24 year old being your teacher in school. Besides me, I'd be a great teacher, okay? But what I'm saying is if you're literally teaching people in school, after having been in school your whole life, you're not actually adding anything new. You're basically just like 
continuing the brainwashing. Isn't that crazy, bro? Continuing the brainwashing. Now you also got to think about guidance counselors. What have they actually done? Well, they were usually a teacher close to retirement and they're like, well, I don't actually want to like grade papers and do marks anymore. So I'll just become a guidance counselor. That way I could work at a school, get benefits, get the summer off. And all I do is just like talk to 15 year olds all day. It's pretty easy, right? These guys, again, they have limited experience in the real world too. So now most of your advice you're getting is from bad people after being brainwashed for the first 18 to 22 years of your life, okay? You also have your parents that might not necessarily have a lot of experience outside of their own career. For example, my dad, he was a construction worker and then he worked as a salesman and then he worked as a limo driver. Then he worked at an airport unloading planes. So he did a bunch of different things. And because of that, he had a lot of different life experiences. And even though we didn't have like, like a wealthy upbringing, we were very middle class. I still learned that it's okay to try a bunch of different things to find out what you like. And most importantly, do whatever it takes to make money and provide. Okay. When my dad was in his forties and he had just had like me and my sister, he got laid off from his job and he had like all these years in experience working sales, but he never graduated college or university. So after he got laid off, he was struggling to like find a new career to start. So he literally started working at an airport, unloading baggage and stuff just because he didn't want to sit around and like be that guy that was waiting around for a job. So that's a side story, but I've always been very inspired by my dad and his ability to like not have an ego about what he does for a living. And that's why I am where I am today as well, because I worked a bunch of construction jobs. I was a driller. I was a forest firefighter. I used to scrub toilets in a property management business. Like this ain't my first rodeo guys. I've done a lot of very humbling jobs and that's why I have the confidence I do now that I've set up my own business and stuff. Okay. So the point I'm making is you need to switch your influence of who you're getting it from. That way you don't take advice from the wrong people and your entire life goes by and you were literally like, Oh shit, I did the completely wrong thing because I got advice from the wrong people. With that being said, back to the point about your parents, if your dad worked in a factory whole his life, or you know, if your mom, she went to university, they're gonna expect you to do the same thing. Son, you need to join a factory too. Son, you need to go to university too. Why? Because that's what they did. And they don't know about internet money. They don't know about YouTube. They don't know about like starting your own business. It's foreign to them. So if you ever feel like your parents are giving you bad advice, it's out of love. They want the best for you. So don't take it personally, okay? Always be respectful for your parents. The next thing people do is they go into the first career opportunity they have. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing if you like what you do, okay? So if you're one of these guys that actually wants to be a doctor or a lawyer or a businessman or an accountant, a teacher, whatever it is, right? Obviously, if you made the right decision and you like what you're doing, this is totally fine. But most people are not satisfied with the job they choose. They're not satisfied with the career. They essentially make the decision without really thinking about it because they have been lied to. So what happens is these guys, they go into a job because all their friends from school are also getting jobs. So they feel pressure too as well, right? Well, we're in a co-op program now. Oh, you got to apply for a big 10 company. Have you ever heard that before? Fortune 500 companies. This happens a lot in tech, right? There's like the big five, you know, Google, Amazon, Facebook, etc. There's a lot of pressure to work for these companies because you need to get that on your resume. You need to get that work experience. And then essentially what happens is you're in this job for anywhere from three to seven years by the time you actually start making a good amount of money. Now it depends what you go into, right? If you go into trades, engineering, law, medical, you are going to do pretty good. You're going to make over hundred K a year within like two to three years at least. But the problem is you're essentially now setting up this as the job for the rest of your life. Because what they do is once you start working for them, they dig their claws in. Okay. They start treating you good. They give you promotions and you know, a good salary raise and oh man, you did a great job this year, Johnny, couple more years, maybe we'll make you a manager or a partner, you know, and all of your friends also are made here. So now your social circle is here. Your livelihood is here. Your status is here. All this is controlled by your job. So you get put in a position where you have no leverage because you need them more than they need you. And that's what brings me to the next point. You get this solid job. Okay. Now you start renting an apartment and you move out from your parents' house. Now, this is a very fun stage of life because you know, it essentially starts in your early twenties. Maybe you're living with your parents, but you go to college or university. So you move in with a bunch of your buddies and you know what it's like to be an adult and have some independence. This was the most fun time of my life. I loved it. 
even if some of the guys I hung out with were degenerate and, you know, I was 19 years old. So we're all partying, fucking around and stuff. Just dirty dishes, you know, staying up, blasting music till 5 a.m. in the morning. It's an essential part of every man's life. So I guarantee that you will grow so much as a man by doing this. But what happens is now you have moved out of your parents' house. So you're paying your own bills, which means you need to keep this job now. Because if you don't keep this job, you're going back to hanging out with your parents and nobody wants to do that. In addition to this, houses are super unaffordable, but we are told that we are only successful once we have our own place. You need to have a house as a status symbol, otherwise you're a loser. That's what it's like in Ontario anyways. And it sucks because housing prices are crazy high and salary has not gone up with inflation. There's a lot of reasons for that, but that's a whole different point. Anyways, you move away. You don't want to go back. Okay, you don't want to be that embarrassment that has to move back in with your parents or whatever. It's an ego thing. It really is. It's not a big deal. But now you're stuck at this job. You need the money and you're hanging out with all the people that you work with because it's convenient instead of making friends intentionally about something you're interested in or finding other guys that are like you and they want to start a business or pursue a certain passion of theirs. You're hanging out with your coworkers. So now every weekend you're hanging out with these guys. In fact, you might even move in with these motherfuckers, okay? Now, with that being said, you have independence. This is good, okay? Life is good. But here's the problem, bro. As you become part of the rat race, especially if you don't like this job and you don't have a plan long term, right? A lot of guys are like, okay, I'll work in this industry for three to seven years, build a bunch of connections, get a salary, be able to afford a mortgage. Then I'll be able to start my own business at the age of 30 or, you know, when I'm 35 or whatever it is, right? Some guys have a fucking plan. They get the right advice, they enjoy school, everything's good, okay? But most guys aren't like that, you know why? Because there are statistics that show that about 90% of people are unsatisfied with their job or career and they regret what they chose. And that should terrify you, bro, especially if you're a young man, okay? Now next, as you live with these guys, you start to get sick of like dishes in the sink and you're getting paid pretty good at your job. So what you do, is you actually move out by yourself, all right? So it starts with a group of guys, but eventually you get to like, I don't know, your mid twenties or whatever, and you're like, I can afford my own place, bro. Fuck roommates, I want my own spot. Why do you do this? Because it gets you pussy. Now this is where shit falls apart, okay? I know a lot of guys are gonna deny this, but everybody knows, every, every guy that's had success dating knows that girls judge you by everything you do. How clean your car is, how new your car is, if you live by yourself, if you live with parents, if you have roommates, like they start to say things like, oh man, your bathroom's so dirty, right? And in the back of your head, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? My bathroom's fine, right? But again, girls, they say these little things and you go, fuck, well, I don't want her to think my bathroom's dirty because then it's less likely she's gonna wanna sleep over here and sex and have sex with me because if my bathroom's dirty, she's not gonna wanna use my bathroom, she's not gonna wanna come over. Like girls pay attention to shit like this. So. As a man, your status is equated to your living situation, how you dress, how you pay attention to people when they talk to you. Like, are you stressed out? Like, oh, oh, I gotta go, you know? Or are you like actually present because your shit's under control, right? So again, what a lot of guys do is they move out, they get a nice fucking Ikea desk and they have like a little condo in Toronto or whatever. They're getting absolutely f on rent, but they live by themselves, bro. They don't have dirty dishes, all their funny buddies that are like going out on the weekend and like having a blast. Oh no, I'm serious now. Oh, I don't, I don't like it when you go with the other guys, Johnny. Right? You ever heard this bullshit before? Anyways, <coughs> losing my breath here because I'm so passionate about this shit. You're now isolated, okay? Next. Now, you're by yourself. You're stuck in your job. You got bills you gotta pay each month. You can't go backwards because of your ego and you have a lot of time after work every day. This is when guys get bored. And when guys get bored, they go, well, I thought I'd be happy after making money. I thought I'd be happy after getting this job. I'm still not very happy. So what do I do? Maybe I'll go online and find out why I'm not happy. So, you know, a lot of dudes, they go on Google and they self-diagnose themselves and they go to their doctor, get some pills. That's a bad idea, don't do that. A lot of other guys, they go down their YouTube rabbit hole of watching content. Maybe this is the video for you. Maybe you're right here, bro. If you are, thank God, man, I'm gonna take care of you. But you find yourself here, you start consuming shit online. Next thing you know, each day after work, you get into a routine of going on your computer, you're by yourself, you're watching YouTube videos, you're on TikTok, Instagram, 
you're horny. So what do you do? You download a dating app, okay? Now, we're not on this stage yet, but these are pretty close to each other, okay? Because you think that the solution to your problem will be getting a girl. You think, wow, I know what I need now. I need to get a girlfriend. Because then I'll get respect from my coworkers. My parents will respect me and treat me like a serious adult. And I'll solve my horniness problem because now I have a girl I can have sex with. And guess what? I got the apartment. I don't have the fucking annoying roommates anymore. And I have a job. I'm a big boy now, okay? And here's the mistake I always try to prevent you guys from making, okay? A lot of the videos on my channel teach you how to approach and attract girls to get into a relationship. But this is because I want you to learn this as a skill, not to fix the emptiness inside of your soul. If you have a hole inside of you, getting a girl is not gonna solve that problem. That's one of the biggest mistakes most men make, and that is why this video is so important. A lot of you come and you're like, you know what? I'm chasing my goals, chasing my purpose. I want a better life and I want to have sex with girls. I want to get a girlfriend. I want people to like me and want to spend time with me. I want to be a socializer. That's the right attitude to have. But a lot of guys, they don't like their job. They don't like who they hang out with. They don't like their bad habits. And they think, okay, I'll just put a big old fucking bandaid on it by getting a girl. Why? Because that's all they know. Ever since you were a kid, you need to get a girl. You need to be nice to girls, get them to like you. Oh, you need to settle down. Your parents, oh, why, why haven't you got a girl yet, right? In school, at work, all your classmates, oh, happy wife, happy life. This is pressure they put on you. And again, you've already got the apartment, didn't make it happy. You already got the job, didn't make you happy because it's the wrong job, okay? You already made the money, it's not making you happy. You also got fucking five hours a night to do whatever you want, also not making you happy. So you're desperate and you're like, fuck, I know what I need to do. Now I need to get some p okay? And that's when you get dating apps. And guess what? A lot of guys don't succeed on dating apps. That's a whole other video. I could make that video next week if you guys wanna see me do an absolute evisceration of dating apps, comment down below. I'll make that video for you, bro. But essentially, this is the worst way you can meet a girl, especially in 2024. Maybe it was different a couple of years ago. They used to be a lot better because they weren't oversaturated and you know girls weren't as random on them. And guys too, if you're a girl watching this. But I'm telling you, bro, in 2024, this is the worst way to meet somebody long-term, okay? Now, this is what happens though. The average guy, he gets his nice headshots done, his dress shirt, his condo, borrows his buddy's dog, copy pastes a cute little bio, and then he matches with the girl. And instantly, all of a sudden, his heart's beating out of his chest. He gets home from work every day, holy fuck, I got a match, right? And you're going back and forth, ah, oh, doesn't go anywhere, fuck. Same thing, yet another match, oh my God, she, oh, she didn't reply. You go through this cycle for a couple weeks, right? And here's the thing, this takes a while. On average, it takes guys on dating apps that are successful at least two months before they actually get some kind of result out of it. So you're on YouTube, oh, how do I improve my dating profile? Oh man, I need to get more matches. Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, whichever one you use of the holy trinity, they start to be like, oh, we can monetize this dumb fucking caveman. You want access to more likes, more boosts? You want to get better results in the algorithm? Okay, motherfucker pay us, right? And these guys literally will spend hundreds of dollars per month on this. But my socializer school, my program that teaches guys to approach and attract girls in real life and get a girlfriend in just 60 to 90 days, perfect five-star rating, thousands of reviews and videos of clients talking about the results they got on my website and a community with weekly Q and A's for me is only $129 for all that. What a fucking idiot you are ever spending money on dating apps when you can literally solve this dating problem you have by just joining Socializer School. It's my paid community. Click the link in the top of the description if you're interested in that. But anyways, back to my point, what happens is guys get stuck in this loop so you're spending hours every day and when you obsess over something, when you pay attention to it, and most importantly, when you're not getting results, when you're getting failures, when you're not getting matches, this hurts your ego. So it makes you want it even more. Now, each day you're walking around like, fuck, like why did this girl not reply to me? Fuck, man, like I see these people happy walking around with a couple, oh, f fuck you guys. You know, how do you, why do you, you know, you start to go crazy, right? Especially if you're a man with high testosterone, you get competitive, right? God damn it, I need to figure this shit out. We like the problem solve. So you go crazy, you try to problem solve this app. Finally, bro, two months, hundreds of hours later, you get a match, the girl meets up with you, okay? You're, oh my God, this girl, wow, like, she actually wanna go on a date with me. She doesn't look as good as her pictures, but like, 
you know, fuck, it's been so long, I'm on a dry spell. I'm too terrified to go and talk to girls in real life because I'm a lazy p bitch. So, oh man, dating apps, this is the best, right? Anyways, this girl, she's been on four dates already this week and she's like, oh man, this guy's fucking clueless and he's desperate, perfect. Oh, he has his own condo? Oh, he lives by himself? Oh, he lets me sleep over all the time? Oh, perfect. Boom, now you get a girlfriend. Congrats, motherfucker. This is the next 10 years of your life. <coughs> oh God, guys, I'm getting too fucking heated here, all right? Comment down below, best professor ever. Welcome to class, bitch. Listen, you guys are now dating each other. Dating, which means you go out for dinner and you go ice skating once a year and then you watch Netflix every weekend, right? Now, if you're a savage motherfucker entrepreneur like me in monk mode, trying to do some crazy shit in the next three to six months, it's normal for you to have a relationship where you work nonstop and then you have your girl come over and visit you. But guess what? Most of you guys, instead of having crazy purposes, like huge ambitious goals, you want to change the world, you're passionate about whatever it is, whether it's being a musician, screenwriter, whatever, fuck all that shit. You replace that with sitting on the couch with your bro. And guess what? What do you guys do? Uber Eats. Fucking junk food, sugar, candy, all your bad habits. But you don't think they're bad habits because now you're doing them with somebody else. So it feels good. And then what happens is you guys get fat. Look at this. Not much of an artist, but look, that's you. You fat. And that's your chick. An actual fat. Okay, so you got two fat on the cat. Oh, fuck. Whoops. Oh, sorry, boys. The fuck? Oh. Sorry guys, got a little excited there. Professor Denmo would totally get fired his first day of class if this was a real school. But anyways, that's what happens, man. And then you get stuck there for several years. She starts to get fatter, you start to get fatter. All of a sudden you have to go to all these fucking bullshit, you know, weddings and you gotta hang out with your buddies because they have a girlfriend too and they wanna go out to get girl food at a girl restaurant. And again, this goes on for a couple years. Next thing you know, you're in your late 20s, early 30s. I've seen this, bro, because look, when I was a young man, when I was like 18, 19, 20, I worked construction with all kinds of guys that literally were this, okay? These guys literally were f dudes in their 30s and 40s that were dating a f girl. But the reason I'm saying this is because I know that you don't and you don't want this, okay? If, if you're happy with all this, if you're happy, why are you even watching this video, bro? Obviously you're doing good. You don't need to be here right now. But dude, I saw this and I was like, no fucking way, that's never gonna happen to me, okay? But it's so common and it's such a slow, steady death. And that's what leads to a fucking midlife crisis, all right? And to be honest, you can go through this at a younger age. You could be like watching this, be like, holy shit, Denmo, I'm 22 years old and that's where I am right now. I've already gone through all this. Good for you, bro, because most guys don't go through this till they're in their 30s or 40s. And I learned this from a young age, so I'm not gonna, like, when I'm in my 30s, 40s, this is not gonna be a fucking issue for me, okay? I'm gonna be like, no way. I'm not letting this shit happen. And then you find yourself in a position where you're like, what happened to my life, bro? I used to be young, have so much energy, so many friends. I was able to go and attract girls in real life, or, or maybe not, you know, that's a skill that most guys don't know how to do, which is why they don't have many options, right? Which is why you should join Socializer School, like I mentioned earlier. We're doing a promo right now. It's only 129, just for the next couple of days, just because I'm in this contest and 129, okay, you should join. But anyways, most guys, they find themselves in this position and they're just so fucking angry because they know that they made a mistake. They know that they don't have as much time to go back and fix things and they feel frustrated. And this is when a lot of guys get red pill rage, okay? They go on YouTube, they talk about how all women are awful, society's out to get you, most people are losers, they're projecting, they really are. And we've all been through this position, right? It's one of the stages of grieving. You are really angry, then you try to negotiate, you try to bargain, and then essentially you come to accept what your life is. And now you're in your 30s or 40s, Maybe, I mean, again, this happens at all ages. Maybe you're in your 20s, but you find yourself raging and you're upset. And now it's so much harder for you to make a change because you start to beat yourself up. You're like, oh, like, I shouldn't have taken those people's advice. Why did I go into this job or college degree I don't actually care about? Why did I stop hanging out with all my boys? You should be hanging out with a group of guys that are interested in the same thing as you. 
If you're a hard worker, then you should hang out with other hard workers. If you like going to the gym early, hang out with other guys. Like a lot of my close friends, they run their own businesses, but some of them don't. But the reason that we get along and we live together and we get so much shit done is because we're all disciplined. We're all hard workers. We have the same core values. So whether you're an engineer, an entrepreneur, a teacher, whatever it is, you should be living with a group of other guys. Isolating yourself from them is what leads you to that loneliness and emptiness, which makes you desperate to go online, join online communities, and then meet girls on a dating app instead of solving your confidence problem. And like I said, bro, when your life is good, when you're confident, sex, girls, amazing, okay? But when your life is in shambles, you need to solve your social skills, solve your social problems, so you don't find yourself making poor decisions like this and getting desperate. You should be dating women out of abundance, not out of scarcity. Remember that. So then you look back and you're like, fuck man, like, what do I do now, okay? And you go on YouTube and maybe this is you right now. You're right here. Now, if this is you, let me tell you really quick how to solve this problem. We're at 27 minutes. Holy shit, boys, my shortest video ever. Man, I'm getting better at this, yo. Drop a comment down below, Professor Daddy Denmo in the fucking flesh. Okay, so now you're online, you're watching videos like this. So, you're watching this video right now. What you need to do is find a couple YouTubers that you actually are getting value from. Maybe one of them's me, maybe one of them's Dan Coe, Rich Cooper, whoever it is that you like listening to. Unsubscribe from everybody else. Download a bunch of plugins that just prevent you from consuming a bunch of bullshit on YouTube. And if you don't know how to do this, I have a free course. It's called the Socializer Protocol. And I know guys, you're probably watching like, man, this motherfucker. First he told us to join his paid community. Now he's telling us about some other shit. This is totally free. It's called the Socializer Protocol. And in this course, I have a section called Dopamine Detox, which allows you to start to block all of these things. So no more notifications, no more color on your screen. When you go on YouTube, it hides the thumbnails. You can also block websites. So if you have a bad habit checking a specific site and you know, think about it, bro. What site do you go on all day? Maybe it's social media, maybe it's Reddit or some shit. You can actually block that. This is one of the many things I teach you how to do in the Socializer Protocol. That's free. So if you don't have money, you can join my free community and get access to that. But the reason I'm saying this, bro, is because when you are consuming too much shit, then you're distracted and you don't have time. And time is your most valuable asset, time and focus. So you need to, first of all, get rid of all these distractions, okay? Next thing you need to do is go to the gym regularly, be exercising. This isn't just for your physique, but your mental health. Some days, bro, I'm so fucking stressed, I'm annoyed. I go and I work out, all of a sudden I feel better, right? So if you're watching this right now and you're like pissed off, you're angry, you feel like, fuck man, I wish I knew this five years ago or whatever, just go and do a heavy workout session. Do some squats, some bench press, some deadlifts, and you're gonna be like, oh, you know what? I feel better now. And guess what? I can turn this shit around still. We got this, bro, okay? So that's your next step. Third thing to do, start talking to your homies again, bro. All right, all those friends that you haven't hung out with in a while, assess which ones are valuable. Assess which ones you would like to be like, okay? Which ones go to the gym? Which ones are making a good amount of money? Which ones are confident and they're happy and they have a career they actually care about? Go and talk to them, hang out with them. Hey bros, let's catch up this weekend, right? Start a group chat, start hanging out with these guys again. You just need some momentum. You need to stop being online, stop giving a fuck about your fancy boy condo or your fancy coworkers that you have to pretend that you like because you work with them. Hang out with your boys, bro. And if you don't have boys, make new friends intentionally. Now, this is also something I put into the Socializer Protocol, how to go and make friends with guys. There's a tracker, like a daily habit tracker I created. You print it out, you put it on your wall, and it has like cold shower, tick, workout, tick, deep work session, tick, go and socialize with people every single day, tick. You could literally set goals to like go and talk to five new people per day. Same thing with girls, if you wanna meet girls, right? I put this worksheet together for you to print out and then you can check it off every day. That way you can track your progress. So instead of waking up tomorrow morning and just assuming you remember all these things I told you, you can join the free community, print them out, fill them out, and then as soon as you wake up, they're on the wall. Oh shit, there we go, boom, check. That is how you start to make progress because whether it's my habit tracker or somebody else's, you need to be reminded every single day. So just print that out, put it on the wall, okay? Now after doing this, you are going to leave your house. So instead of being in, at home on your computer, go to a coffee shop, bring your laptop, get a coffee, put some headphones in. If you see a cute girl you wanna to talk to, go talk to her. If you see another guy on a laptop, be like, hey bro, what are you doing? Do you, have a, do you, do you run an online business? Are you working remote? Oh man, no, me too. Or you could be like, 
Yeah, no, dude, I work for like this corporation, but I'm trying to find a new way to make money online. That's my point, bro. We're gonna find you another way to make money. You don't have to work in person anymore. You can work remote. This is the internet, bro. This is the golden age of technology and information. You could literally become an engineer, a coder, software developer, online salesman. You could start a personal brand like me. If you wanna become a YouTuber, my paid community helps you do that as well. And now you're actually being productive on the computer. You know why? It's actually a psychological trick, buddy. When I had a hard time beating off, or <laughs> sorry, when I had a hard time not beating off, I started working in public. Because if you're working in public, obviously you're not gonna pull out your hog and just start beating your meat. But at home, in your private room with no roommates, it's very easy to masturbate because there's nobody there. So again, if while you're by yourself, you go on YouTube, you start watching red pill shit, you start jerking off, whatever it is, go in public and I guarantee you won't do that. Why? Because there's other people around. All right, so please don't jerk off in public, bro. Anyways, now that you're in public, you're starting to research new skills you could learn, ways to make money online, and you get to a point where you're like, you know what, this is what I want. So you take advice from the right people, okay? And now you start learning. Maybe you have to invest in a program. Maybe it's free. Like there's literally like five hour free courses on copywriting, there's free courses on coding, there's free courses on online sales, there's also free courses on YouTube. I have a paid one, so if you wanna do what I have done, like if you like me and you're like, I wanna be like Denmo, you can join my socializing community for 129. I have a YouTube course in there. But my point is, there is a bunch of free information online. You don't have to go to university. You don't have to work in a specific industry. You can learn an online skill. Now that you've made that online skill, you got your friends you're hanging out with regularly to give you motivation, you're going to the gym, and you're consuming good content, and meeting girls in real life, because you're my socializer school, if you wanna learn how to attract girls in real life, now all of a sudden, you're resetting your life, okay? You have momentum, you feel good, you're working towards something new, you're using the money you have from your current job to give you a little bit of leeway, right? So if you want to find a remote job or work remote for the current company that you're working at, you can go to a different country. You can go with your buddies or you can go and meet new buddies there, Again, in my communities, there's other guys that are also on the same wavelength as you and I that wanna travel around the world while working and making money. So you can join and you can be like, hey, who's in Brazil? Who's in Thailand? Let's link up. That's another way you can make friends, joining a, uh, a private community. But the idea is now you are in control of your finances, your body, you're not consuming bullshit all day on the computer, you are not listening to bad advice, you're only getting good advice from the YouTubers or mentors that you selected. This could also include books, audiobooks, podcasts, that kind of thing. And instead of using dating apps, you're meeting girls in real life. So you don't have to worry about that shit anymore, right? And that is when you start living again. You feel alive. You watch this video and you're like, fuck yeah. A couple months from now, you're gonna come back and you're gonna be on this video or the one I make a couple months from now and you're gonna be like, yo, I did everything that Denmo said and now I have the life that I want. And that's exactly what I want for you. It's fucking super powerful, bro. Okay, so what are we at right now? 35 minutes? Man, this is my, my fastest video ever. I'm getting better at this. I'm crushing the fucking game out here. But guess what? It's not just me, it's you too, all right? Because you're gonna do all of these over again the right way. You're gonna avoid the mistakes because great men learn from the mistakes of others, not their own. In addition to this, you know how to turn everything around. So if you're one of those guys like, oh man, I fucked up, I wish I knew this. Don't worry, bro. Okay, I just gave you the gold mine, all right? If you appreciate this video, if you wanna support me, just do me a solid, bro. Leave me a comment telling how much this video helped you because that's what motivates me the most, hearing your stories. But also, just share this with your friends, bro. Like, I know you have a couple other friends that also would make it easier for you to do this, right? If one of your friends invites you to go do something, you'd be like, yeah, dude, let's go. But without them inviting you, you probably would never do it on your own. That's my point, man. A bunch of your friends also would benefit from watching this video. They'd be like, dude, yeah. In fact, let's do this together. You watch this video, your friend watches it, and the two of you set goals together, you print out the worksheets, you're going to the gym together, you're like, fuck yeah, dude, let's go to Thailand, let's live on the beach for like 500 bucks a month and start our online businesses. Now it's not as lonely, man, because the number one problem with men is we hate being alone. I get it. If you're alone right now, this is gonna be so much harder to do. But if you have some friends that are also on the page that you are, and they're better at explaining than you are, like uh, me, I mean, right? Like if you have friends with you, this is gonna be so much easier. But instead of you like calling them, like you're like a
Kane ran like, dude, we gotta quit our jobs, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna be like, Johnny, shut the fuck up. What are you talking about, bro? This guy's on Adderall again or something, right? Instead, you send them my video and they're like, wow, first of all, this guy's so sexy. God, I would love to suck this dude's cock if I was gay, but I'm not. But anyways, Denmo's the best, right? That's how your friend's gonna react. You're gonna send them this video and they're gonna be like, holy shit, dude, did you know that Denmo invented sex and electricity? Fuck, this guy's incredible, dude. We got this, okay? So, again, Send this video to your friends, get them on board, start a group chat. If you don't have any friends, go and make some, you dumb cockroach. Or join my free online community. We got 10,000 guys in there, you can talk to them. That's how you get the free socializer protocol. Or if you wanna join the paid exclusive community, this is for guys making a lot of money, you wanna improve your social skills, you wanna start a personal brand, you wanna learn how to approach and attract girls, solve your girl problem forever, you can join Socializer School. That's my paid community, 129 big ones, okay? You know what to do. I don't know what else to say, man. I'm fucking super excited. I feel alive. This might just be my best video yet, okay? I'll see you in the next one, bro. Next time in the classroom. Peace.